Wait, don't click off yet. There's something here, my little puppy. I promise. Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum, say that 10 times fast, is the third Imsim I'll be covering on this channel, and the first that isn't a first person game. This might be the hardest game for me to sell to you, and yes, even harder than the Kafka esque hyper reality that is Cruelty Squad. The game actually shares a lot of themes with that. It's being developed by No Day Shall Erase You, and it's a melting pot of everything that I, a self proclaimed schizoid that sells his pills for sweet, sweet taco chips, and even more, better, exciting drugs, just adores. So stay a while and listen. Maybe you'll find something you might love too. Maybe not as much as them dirty taco chips but there will be something. Okay kids, let's talk about corporate dystopias. Customer or employee, you don't matter. The only thing that matters is profit or control. I'm sure my friends stateside feel this every day in their consumer's hellscape. And a little bit of chicken fry. Never any debt. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Buy subscriptions, buy skins, all while the psychopaths at the top dictate your future. Or if you want to look at it more nihilistically, destroying the prospect of a future more than any shadow government ever will. This is sort of what DDS is all about, and yes, I'll be using that acronym from now on. You are an absolute nobody that has been brought back to life to pay a silly big bill to a faceless corporation. We start our journey in the most clinically sanitized reception known to man, that's home to the rather eccentric and totally not trustworthy concierge. And how do I know she's not trustworthy? She uses Kemoji. Never trust anyone that uses Kemoji. She lets you know that you've been resurrected by the enigmatic corporation without your consent, because of course, now you're a slave. I mean Irish. We'll have a few drinks with you first, we'll slap you into the face afterwards. Or correctly, an agent who has to conveniently pay off a bill of one million dollars with the interest that keeps rising each day. So you could definitely compare this to the American health system, am I right? Oh, say can you see? So how are you expected to pay off this gargantuan debt? Well, I'm glad you asked. By hacking, killing and stealing from all the corporation's enemies. And God forbid you die. The corporation is just that generous to keep you alive and make you front the bill later. So get ready to die a lot and accumulate a ludicrous bill all in the name of a company that you have no idea what they do. Kind of like real life, innit? Along the way, you meet a colorful cast of characters that speak like this. I know we just met and all, but things have been kind of lonely for me lately. Do you think that, uh, we could be friends? They also work for the corporation that definitely just want to be friends, and certainly don't want to emotionally abuse you, manipulate you, kill you, I think that one's the most petty, all with the aim of getting ahead of you in some way. Trust Duve, definitely trust Duve, how could you not with a name like that? The writing is going to turn a few people off with its random uwu web speech, but there's something so endearing about it. I like it, it's authentic weeb speak cringe and no one can tell me otherwise. The game has branching dialogue options that have an impact on the story and gameplay. I have a recommendation though, if you're playing this, go for the most silly responses. If there's one thing that might be up for debate, it's how abruptly it ends. Personally, I've always been a fan of narratives that have had that wait, is that it moment? Only to go back to it later and realize, holy shit, that's kinda rad. The endings are appropriate in the grand scheme of things. So I think the narrative is strong and has enough mystery and humor to keep you going, especially if you like repeated playthroughs. Okay, so this isn't the most technical or visually stunning game you'll ever see, but it has something going for it. While the visuals could be described as the caves of good fucked up XL simulator, with a dash of absurdism thrown in for good measure, it's charming in its own simplistic, utilitarian way. Rather than breaking down each individual facet of the visuals, I'd like to talk about the ultimate course friend, Disassociation. A simple pixel man committing mass atrocities in the top-down view presents an interesting dynamic in gameplay and narrative terms, and mentally it allows us to rid ourselves of any guilt, or maybe allow us to imagine it in more visceral detail. Lobotomy Corporation does something similar to that, and if you know, you know. With the defried anime girls and their fucked up pixel men bodies, it's really up to you to decide what everything actually is, and what's real and what's not. Environments are simple and full of contrast. Each area presents a slightly different theme, from simple industrial buildings to Japanese-inspired villas, Tory gates and all, and horrible distorted mindscapes, you'd be surprised with how atmospheric it can all be, especially on them rainy days. It does so much with so little, and as the game goes on, it becomes more visually interesting. The HUD and UI elements are simple, for me, a player with 20 hours in the game, but could be a little bit complex for newcomers. I definitely thought so when I started. Now one of the game's biggest faults and biggest features is the choice to procedurally generate a lot of assets in the game. While it's there to add variety, it's variety in a constantly changing way that will make each new run and each new mission slightly different. 
I think this is a bad thing. I can estimate what any bad guy can do, or where roughly they're going to be at any time after a few warm-up runs, but as far as identifying them or their equipment, it's near impossible, with every gun looking like Uncle's TV dinner. In a heated situation, the game leaves you feeling like a spare prick at a horse wedding, and maybe that's a good thing. It drives home the idea of uniformity when all your enemies are separated only by scaling levels, but what they look like and what their weapons are, nah, it's tough, man. And especially with the guns, you never know really what you're getting when you're picking them up. Finally, there's some graphical options that allow you to tweak the game's visuals to be as trippy as you want them to be. So if for whatever reason you despise the color teal, or if you want to make the game even more bright, there's a setting for you. As minimal as the visuals are, the sound effects are just as much. And sometimes they're oddly humorous. <laughs> I've no issue with it if it's the game's atmosphere. The soundtrack, on the other hand, is wonderfully executed. It's a collection of lo fi tracks that will keep you calm even in the most brutal of difficulty spikes. I enjoy the tracks that have the more somber tone to them. Even if you aren't going to play the game, give the soundtrack a shot. You can't buy it yet, but you can stream it on YouTube. I'll put a link somewhere in the description if you're looking for it. Aesthetically, everything blends together ever so wonderfully to create a one-of-a-kind of experience that's just full of character. And I love it, and you should too. For a game that's deceptively simple looking on the surface, it's ridiculously rich in its design. Think I Divine Cybermancy in its complexity and build variety, Hotline Miami in gameplay and difficulty, and your first year in computer science just to spice things up. It's absolutely psychotic. And that's all very deliberate. You'll be playing this game from a top-down perspective. Your vision is solely limited to the radius surrounding your character, meaning every room and every corner is going to have some threat to deal with. And sure, you could go in guns blazing, and I did for the first two hours, and I nearly played my keyboard through my screen, but that was because I was a dum-dum. The gunplay is deliberately slow and clunky by way of the aiming mechanic. You have to use your mouse to swing around a gun, and this can be slow, and even then you have to be very careful. Think Chuck and a toddler out of an airlock, and that's how aiming feels. Ammo is limited, the recall is hard to control, and every shot is a projectile. This means if you're wasting ammo, you'll be scavenging a lot. Grenades! You've got them too. Now while I didn't use them all that much, they did add some versatility to the core gameplay loop, and they're not all violent. You can even use them like a drone to scout out another room, or put baddies to sleep. You have melee options too. You have this kick that can burst through windows and knock objects about, plus a bunch of different melee weapons. They take some time to get used to. Your character will try to swing from where your cursor is aiming, but like the guns, it has drag, and not the snappy, sassy kind. The size of your weapon really does count. They can clash and clang with NPC melee options and walls. It's kind of like shagging in the doghouse. But they are as lethal as your gun, so it's usually a one shot and you're out kind of ordeal. But here's the thing, the baddies can do the exact same thing as you. By that I mean murder you relentlessly, over and over and over again. They are as smart as they need to be and can do almost anything that you can do, some things even better. The game is out to get you, I swear. You can slow time down to a crawl, dodge all the bullets like you're playing some Toho game, but that can only get you so far. You can go further, much further, like pranking your sister's boyfriend with a fake pregnancy test fire. Introducing the hacking mechanic, and I could see this being a turn off for some. And truth be told, at the start, I hated it so much. And mainly because I had fish brain and typed slower than an armless dude typing with his bell end. But as I got used to it and learned its intricacies, it became one of the more enjoyable elements in the game. You have to bring up a terminal and pull up all the local devices in the area. Then hop to them and type help remote. Find the right command and execute it. For cameras, that's turning them off. Opening doors, switching the uppers with the downers. Accessing nodes, spiking servers, and gaining complete control of the turret network, befriending them all, and causing all sorts of shenanigans. And if that sounded like absolute gibberish it is until you realize you're Mr. Robot minus the amphetamines. What's even more exciting is the silly and weird things you can do with it, like hacking bullets in real time, controlling and befriending NPCs, and playing the hit game DDS within DDS. Huh, I wonder if this will work. <laughs> I could probably go on for about another two minutes listing all the things you could possibly do with it. 
I think it's just better if you discover it on your own at this point. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm hardly a typing of the dead pro, but there is ways of improving your words per minute. If you start a command and press tab, it'll automatically finish it for you. And generally, it's mostly right. Combined with the slug slow-mo system, it means that even you can do it. Yes, you. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it's addicting. You won't need your bib anymore. Flexibility is key, and boy, your agent is as flexible as Twitter's work from home policy. Wait, that's a bad dated joke. Your agent has access to a plethora of classes that you can build into with a remarkable amount of synergy with one another. For a game that looks like this, would you expect to create an army of the dead commanded by a pulsating mound of flesh, turning every living being into the undead to the point that every entity will want a slice of your meat pie? That's the necromancer lifestyle. Or how about becoming Dio Brando, slowing time to a standstill, speedrunning missions without even triggering an alarm? Every class you unlock is less about the class itself and more about the abilities that you can mix and match. You unlock these by getting chiplets, and these are hidden in some levels. At a certain point, a whimsical salesperson comes along and allows you to buy more. Remember when I said I was a dum dum? I said this a lot in my videos. Well, you start the game with one chiplet. You have three active abilities and three passives. Now, I find the balance to be a bit all over the place with some of the abilities, with some just being stupidly broken, some for the pure novelty of it, and others are just underwhelming to the point that they're a non factor. I know the overpowered ability should be exactly that. And the novelty abilities, sure, keep them like that. But so many weaker abilities should be brought up in some way. I only had one issue with this system before, and it was the passives. But I got in contact with the dev about this, and they were super humble about it, and changed it within a week of me mentioning it. Now, I do think more people brought it up. But the fact that they were super receptive to any feedback, plus this being an early access release, they were super speedy with the updates. Props no day. There's a few unlockable abilities that you have to do a bunch of odd things to get, and they're kind of crazy. To complement the skill system, you can buy multiple sets of armors that have different stats for different builds that can be upgraded after a certain point in the story. But I find that the number go-off methodology behind them is just a little bit on the weak side. And usually you can just pick whatever's the highest number that will work with your current abilities, and you'll be grand. Whether that be armor, slug, or ego. All of which do synergize with specific builds. It's just you can kind of set and forget them. I'd have liked them having just a little bit more depth. Maybe they can buff certain abilities or playstyles more. The same kind of thing applies to the weapons. I could always go for the crossbowy type guns. They'd one-shot anyone, but there really wasn't any other choice there. Rapid fire weapons swing like a bitch and do pitiful damage in a game that every shot matters. And melee-wise, unless you're using some of the ego abilities, it's better just to bait enemies and sit in a corner, then use small swords that you'll know will one-shot. Even if there is a best in slot problem with the game, it doesn't take away how utterly fun it is to play. And I do mean the game is fun. The moment to moment gameplay is utterly thrilling. There's almost unlimited possibilities when it comes to specking your class. It's enthralling and kept me coming back for a number of playthroughs, but it isn't just the build variety that will keep you coming back for more. So let's look at the level design and why I think it's wonderful. The maps vary from open to claustrophobic, but they're also very interactive. They vary mechanically with a unique approach nearly every time, giving you a multitude of different tasks to complete. And how you approach them is purely up to your imagination, like a creepy Agent 47 waiting for the perfect moment. But it's the sheer interactivity of it all and attention to detail that gets me every time. To talk about this, I'm going to explain the tutorial level. Yes, the very first area in the game. So if you desperately want to skip this section, there should be a timestamp now. My first few times I went through the motions, sharpening my hacking skills and really just wanted to get out as fast as possible. In one of my more recent playthroughs, I noticed that the map was much bigger than I previously thought, with hidden chiplets all around to give you a boost early and allow for more class flexibility. But then there was this door. How do I open this door, I thought. How the fuck are you supposed to? With a little bit of advanced hacking that I wouldn't have thought about in my first playthrough, so after looking at the map, I figured out how to open the door. It was all connected. I can access the cameras to see our wonderful and lovely friend creepily observing us while we observe them. And hey, you're not supposed to be here. Why are you here? So you can have a conversation with the secret NPC, The Angle. Yes, that's her name. Don't question it. Because if you do, you'll get domed. And end a tutorial with two million in debt, because screw you for being so rude. But if you choose your words wisely, you'll live, and she'll get in contact with you later. But like my dad 20 years ago, she never really does. Now, that's just a tutorial. And if a secret like that is hidden within the first five minutes of possible gameplay, could you imagine what's possible in other levels? Yes, there's a lot of secrets that reward experimentation, and the game actively acknowledges this at every turn. Dialogue choices can even determine what levels you'll be getting later on, meaning not only getting a slightly different story, but vastly different scenarios too. And it's the game's utter dedication to surprise you like that that will keep you coming back for more. Personally, I prefer the smaller levels to the absolute hellscapes the endgame throws at you, but even then, I love them too. There's supposedly more quests and characters coming down the line, but we can talk about that later. But for now, in my 20 hours of gameplay, I can confidently say that this game feels like a complete game. 
So what's the point of it being in early access when a few seconds ago I said it feels like a complete game? Well, no day seems to disagree, and maybe he's right. There's clearly a lot of ambition, and what they're adding is seemingly substantial. No Day claims that it will take up to 6 months to complete and I believe him. I wrote a review on Steam shortly after the game was released and one of my biggest complaints was that the hacking system felt a bit awkward. Now, while I was wholly wrong about a certain aspect of the hacking, and this little guy corrected me, No Day created an easy mode hacking system that's controller friendly in what seems like no time at all. There's been frequent updates weekly, sometimes twice a week, and it feels like every time I log into the game whatever minor annoyance I had was cleared up, gone, and finished. With that being said, what's there to come to the game? Aside from your usual bug fixes and balance changes, and oh boy I'd love for some balance changes to make everything more viable and gear more exciting to get, there'll be more side content and more classes. While everything I just listed sounds exciting, I'm super interested in the roguelike mode that will be added to the game. I didn't touch on the training mode or side gigs before because they aren't that substantial, and they're kinda getting reworked soon. But the prospect of a roguelike mode excites me. The way that the game is set up it almost feels like it could be a match made in heaven, provided certain aspects of the game are expanded on. If there was more clarity for what weapons you were getting, giving them clear and defined roles, and giving your armor more unique playstyles, then yeah, I could see it being wonderful. But I'm not a game dev, and if adding all of that would constitute for more feature creep, then fuck it, I can still see it being enjoyable. So I love DDS, and it's hard for me not to give it my Coca game wankery seal of approval, because it's just that kind of game. I'm just shocked that there's just so much depth in something so unassuming. Don't let the visuals dissuade you, this game has depth. And when someone comes along with a massive platform just to show the world what a wonderful game it truly is, I hope it gets the attention that it truly deserves. The game is cheap, it's like 10 euros. That's like two elf bars for you zoomers. I imagine it's close enough in freedom books, but if you want to try before you buy there's a demo on the Steam page, which yeah, you should totally be downloading right now. I'll wait. It's like a gig, dude. Come on. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Stay tuned for more content. The next two videos I have planned for this channel, I'm excited to get out. They're really cool. At least I think they are. But the plans might change as they go along. But hey, that's just the nature of YouTube content creation. And as always, thanks for a thousand subs. <laughs>